Every day there's uh, drips and drabs of, of more information about all these things. We, we've talked to you a couple of weeks ago. What's your current just general thoughts, not just about Boeing's earnings, but about uh, where the company is in this, in this process? And I guess in your long career, you've never seen anything exactly like this, but I'll bet you, like they say about history, you've seen some things that rhyme with this, I would say, right? Well, it's unprecedented, Joe, as you would imagine. I, I have a lot of confidence in Boeing long term. I mean, as Phil LeBeau points out, they measure their accounting in decades, not in, in years. So this airplane is, is going to get fixed. I think they're on track of the schedules that I've seen. And of course, they've got to get consensus with other regulatory agencies throughout the world. So it's a bigger program than just getting the FAA to buy on it, buy in on it. But I, I, I believe they're on track meeting those goals in a systematic way. Um, Ryan, or Dryden, you, uh, you obviously are, are long the stock, and, and you, you long before this happened, I guess. Have, have you ever wavered in, in your position or, or added to it or sold any? Uh, well, we, we, we actually continue to add to Boeing, uh, particularly for new money coming into the firm. The important thing to recognize is, to some sense, they have been through a little of this before, back when you had the problems with the 787. The, the stock moved in a range for a while, and then they were able, able to solve that, move forward. Boeing's got a great history of solving big problems uh, over decades and decades of their existence. And when they solved that problem with the 787, the stock moved up nicely on a very long run. And we think that uh, the question here is, this a, is this a one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, four quarter problem? Uh, because there's nothing changed about the long-term demand for narrow-body aircraft, and they have a long backlog. So it's just when does that come back online? Uh, so we think that the pricing is going to move around a little bit uh, based on the tone and the comments, uh, but we're still favorable towards the stock and long-term uh, very favorable towards Boeing. So do you gentlemen think that when Boeing made the decision to do the narrow-body hub-and-spoke system versus the... I don't know what the heck was that thing, the spruce goose almost, that uh, I don't even know if they're making those anymore, but it, was that decision uh, uh, long term is almost as big a deal as, as what's happening right now, Gordon? I mean, Boeing is, is still in the catbird seat, right? Well, yeah, they've got a really good product, Joe. I mean, lots of experience, a lot of operators of that same equipment out there, so their base is solid. And, of course, you don't just replace a model aircraft overnight. So those are really long-term decisions for air carriers. And, and Boeing's got the product. As, with, as Dryden mentioned, it's a, this is a long-term game. And they've got, I think, a good, solid base to work from. And while maybe late summer is probably reasonable expectations to have this behind them, that's kind of what I'm, I'm hearing in the noise, and that makes a lot of sense. And what's it going to be, Gordon, as a, as a pilot? Exactly what, what does it look like where this is completely fixed and all of us are going to be getting, a, oh, are you on a, I don't even know if I was on a 737 MAX. I got on a Boeing plane, I didn't even notice because I'm, I'm totally comfortable again. When is that going to be and, and what's the fix? Well, for guys like me, it's, it's tomorrow. If they fly tomorrow, I have a lot of confidence in the airplane now. They, I think, accomplish more than 100 or 100 flights on, on testing out this new software without incident. And so I think they've got their finger on the problem. I think they've got it fixed. And now it's a question of getting everyone comfortable and people like you to get on the airplane without asking what kind of airplane is this. Hey, Gordon, isn't on. it also trying to convince the FAA and the authorities around the globe um, that it's okay, too? I mean, just because of all the issues that have raised, it seems like that might be a bigger yes. headwind than... Becky, past. that's 100 you know, percent, and that's unprecedented there, so that this kind of consensus approach to these regulatory agencies hasn't happened and happened before necessarily. They just kind of fall in line behind the, the FAA and, and go down you know, and stamp essentially whatever the FAA approves. Right. I think it's going to be more collusion now and, 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 and get consensus amongst those agencies. So, Dryden, is there, in your view, is there reputational risk even after it's fixed that the way this was handled initially in terms of whether it was with the FAA or whether they were late to, to own the, uh, the, the problem that, that resulted in the crashes, does any of that have a long-term impact on Boeing as far as its reputation? I think there's two points. The call today is going to be tremendously important 
the tone of the CEO about we have the fix, we know what it is, we're very transparent about this, and we're going to move directly and forcefully to resolve this quickly, uh, I think is very, very important in restoring both investor confidence, if that's wavered some, but also the flying public's confidence. So the tone of the leadership is tremendously important here, and that's the thing that we should watch for. In terms of how the flying public looks, uh, you really only have two players in the space, and you have multi-year backlogs. Sooner or later, people kind of get back onto it, and, and they overcome this. It's kind of like, uh, unfortunately, when you think about a, natu uh, a natural disaster, after a number of months, people sort of begin to forget that it happened. Uh, so I think that's what we're looking at, uh, and that may take a little bit longer, but tone of the leadership of the company is going to be very, very important here, and it's kind of what they say today and move on is how quickly people can restore confidence uh, in this very essential aircraft uh, to, to global trade and, and people moving around the world.